This newly introduced core app to GNOME is stirring up a lot of drama. The GNOME 48 desktop will include an official audio player called Decibels. And right now is available as a flat pack, which I'm going to be trying out so I can show you what it kind of looks like as GNOME has decided to create yet another audio player. The goofiest thing is in today's day and age, an audio player doesn't go too far, but nonetheless, we're gonna give it a shot and look at some of the critiques of this move. So if you wanna contribute to Decibels, it's officially a core app announced by GNOME. And you can currently try it out on the nightly install from the GNOME nightly repositories. For example, if you wanted a flat pack and you had access to the GNOME nightly repository, you can install it with this command and then run it with the following. We're gonna be checking out this application and actually comparing it a little bit to Rhythm Box. But I do wanna first get into how Decibels, the audio player was built right after talking about the fact that it was introduced into the core of the GNOME ecosystem. Decibels was archived by the owner on March 11, 2024. And that's just to move it over to the GNOME GitLab repository instead. But what I wanna show you here is the languages that it's built upon. The majority of this code is written in TypeScript and currently has over 497 commits on GitLab. Here's a preview of what the audio player decibels looks like and the icon set. Again, some of the key criticisms here include things like resource allocation, performance and technology choices, lack of unique or even essential features, and just the skepticism behind the whole entire project itself. While these are some of the negatives, some of the positives I've seen using it is the visual appeal and alignment with GNOME's design principles. Really the aesthetics and design do match. We're gonna check that out. Of course, this is a volunteer driven project and whatever the developers are interested in, we can argue that they deserve to work on whatever they wanna work on and shouldn't be beholden on what other people want them to work on. So anyways, with many mature choices out there, including things like Rhythmbox that comes standard with Ubuntu, let's give this a little bit of a shot. So over here on the left-hand side is the new Decibels audio player. So let's focus on this for a little bit. So far, we can definitely tell that it's more modern looking than Rhythmbox, but is it as polished? Well, no, it's not. I've already ran into issues. For example, if you were to drag and drop things into Rhythmbox, well, it just works. You get multiple titles located directly in and you double click them and you can play them. Simple, effortless. And I do have the sounds turned off in the background, although that I can hear them. That way it's not interrupting with what I'm saying, but you'll have to trust me that these two are working. And then if I go to Rhythmbox, well, can I drag and drop? No, I can't. This is already quite annoying. And the other thing that I found is that you can't really put more than one audio file in at a time. Why is this not working? It says file cannot be found. No available audio file found. Try again. Well, when I hit try again, then I get the selection of whether or not I want to select it directly from my finder or dialog box. Using the file browser now, I cannot select more than one file. Okay, not a big deal. Can I select one? Yes, I can. And like magic, it starts working. Seems a little goofy that it can't detect audio files by itself when drag and dropping, but when you select them from the Finder app, it works fine. Clearly a bug there. I'm just gonna use the open feature and now select warning MP3 so we can see it. I do like the way that they designed the waveform and it shows you kind of the noise that's going to be played and also the smooth dragging and panning through, or I guess you can even call it scrubbing, while you're trying to use the audio file is great. It lets you really select what portion of the audio file you want to listen to. Now, the one thing that's also awesome is if I hit play and then I use it for scrubbing, I can actually listen to the sound happening while I'm scrubbing. I do like this balance of the waveform and scrubbing feature. And one other thing is it really looks like the rest of the GNOME apps. This is a big reason why GNOME has probably chose to put effort into this development is creating a cohesive experience and environment for users that all have apps that look very much the same. Again, this is a criticism by many, arguing that GNOME could have focused on addressing other desktop issues or integrating more feature-rich applications instead of introducing this app like Decibels. Well, the argument there is a little flawed because when you have extra developers in time, well, you can have them focus on other things that, that their particular skill set is best for. For example, maybe there's extra resources and this person wanted to work out the audio player and they thought, hey, let's work on that. It's really the choice of developers on what they wanna work on at the end of the day, in my opinion anyway. 
You got to remember this is open source and volunteer work. Just the fact that we may be able to utilize or allocate resources in a different way doesn't mean we have to, but it does really feel like reinventing the wheel here. Let's keep going into what they have. When compared to Rhythmbox, I do like the fact that you can select more than one audio file at a time and play between tracks fairly quickly instead of having to open them constantly, which I would consider a new window. Maybe you can open up multiple decibel instances, but that seems a little goofy in itself. Regardless, that's just my personal preference, but if I open up another file and I go down here, you can actually go back and forth by 10 seconds. Now, one thing I realized was you can't really go back and restart things without scrubbing it backwards. AKA, if you're in the middle of something and I hit back on the 10, it looks like I don't even have 10 seconds of scrubbing available, so it just doesn't even go back. I would say that if I hit back 10 seconds, I should try to at least go back 10 seconds. It doesn't have to go the full 10 seconds. Just another thing that I kind of ran into, especially if they want to flush out some of the user interface improvements, I can suggest that that could be an improvement too. One thing is if I look at this too long with this type of waveform, it really does mess with my eyes. I'm not sure if it does for the rest of you. Let me know in the comments section below if it does. I don't like how close these lines are. It really trips me up after looking at it for a while. Now, do I have to keep looking at this view? Well, I'm not sure. I haven't been able to change it over to a different type of view. I don't really see any kind of settings that I can change it between. We do have a slider for advancing, and I was able to crash the media player by trying to adjust the speed here. And it seems like a rounding issue, at least in the background. But I wanted to show you that you can also change the speed in about 0.1 increments, which I think is completely fine. I don't know that you need any more finer detail than that. It would be nice if you could double click and select and just put in a speed instead of having to use the drag indicator. But that's again, more personal stuff. Also, we don't have as fine detail down here towards the end. You can't slow it down to, for example, like 0.1, but you can go all the way to three times on the other side of things. You have a full volume control over on the right hand side. We don't see the units or percentages over here. Seems a little inconsistent with what we had over here on the left hand side, but that's fine. If you click over here on the icon, you can mute and unmute the audio as well. Now, before we get into some of the community sentiment, I want you to take a moment and subscribe below if you enjoy these types of videos. YouTube can get finicky and not send them out, so might as well subscribe so you get more Linux and programming videos. Also, if you're enjoying this type of content, make sure to smash that like button for me. To get it out to more people, let's talk about some of the community sentiment. As it is mixed, honestly, leaning more towards negative or even critical, and I think it's a bit unwarranted, but that's my opinion. Some of the key criticisms here of course, pertain to resource allocation. People are describing it as a waste of time for GNOME developers to be working on this and should be focused on more pressing issues, which I think is a complete joke. Let the developers work on what they want to work on. Now, you can argue that they're reinventing the wheel, sure, but if they're trying to make a more cohesive experience for the GNOME desktop users, well, leave it be. Performance and technology issues include that using TypeScript or JavaScript is resource intensive, and that there's better choices. Again, armchair experts putting in what, what they want to use instead of what the developers want to use. So let's just check HTOP. Whoa, HTOP, don't have it, of course not. So I'll get it real quick. So what's the usage look like here? I mean, for a modern computer system, I mean, for a modern computer, this is going to use next to zero resources as I don't even see it in the top 10 for CPU usage. Let's just go to memory. And really the same goes for memory. But if you are comparing this to lighter audio players like Amber All or Dead Beef, well, yeah, there's definitely a perceived inefficiency. Now, the lack of unique essential features, I think, is a valid criticism. I think the UI can be improved, and we can think about the UI and UX experience a little bit more before releasing something like this. I know that they're going to fix these issues that I've already mentioned, but it's almost too simple, at least for me, and especially when comparing it to existing multimedia players or music managers that serve the same purpose. I mean, we looked at Rhythmbox and its features. It has overall fairly good types of views, including different tools and preferences that we can set, just giving you that little bit of extra tweaking experience that might be necessary to play things back the way you like to play them. Overall, can argue that it matches the aesthetics and design that GNOME is looking for. Fantastic. Also, only time will tell what people think about this simple audio player. It seems like it'll be a great alternative for people 
who want a very simple player while they also have many choices when it comes to alternatives that have way more advanced features. Whether we like it or not, a lot of people just want something extremely simple, and I think this does the job. Anyways, there's not much more to explore here, but I do want to say it's available on Flathub as a flat pack. If you want to get decibels, you can install it today by using this command. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can check it out yourself and see what you think. I'd also love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Now, this is currently a bit out of date as it was built three months ago, where I initially joined the GNOME incubator and now has been officially announced as a core application or package. I do want to understand what your stance on GNOME and making these applications for a more cohesive desktop environment are. But I do want to talk about, again, the creative freedom that the developers should have to choose their own tools, languages, and frameworks, as they're already clearly passion-driven for development and providing us with new open source software, volunteering their time, and it should be our choice whether or not we want to use it. At the end of the day, I think open source thrives on individuals being able to work on what excites them, not what the community expectations are. So I think it's a little goofy that a lot of people are trying to dogpile on this. Well, it should be built on this, or it should use less resources, or, or we shouldn't have another application like this. Those seem a little goofy, as the essence of open source is autonomy. You have no obligation to cater to organizations or even communities. Instead, we want to be able to share things freely and build them as we like. Although I'll agree unconventional programming like TypeScript was used, but if someone wants to choose a programming language like that against something more native, well, let it be. While it's always great to listen to constructive feedback from the community, I am not sure that the drama here was quite warranted, as many people had things to say. At the end of the day, let's let developers create projects because they want to, not because they owe the community something. That's part of the beauty of open source contribution. I just wanted to cover this one a little bit because it did, because it definitely did stir the pot a little bit. Let me know what you think about the projects in the comment section below. And if you made it to the end, you're a true fan, make sure you're subscribed below because you wouldn't want to miss more videos like this. Don't forget to support the channel by smashing that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.